In this episode, I'm going to look at a Sony TC200. This is a vintage vacuum tube and transistor, so it's a hybrid reel-to-reel -reel that Sony produced back in the 1960s. And this is quite a rare unit because Sony always prided themselves as being all solid state, but this one's got tubes in it, which is a rarity for Sony. This one needs a fair bit of work. Let's get started. It should be noted that the TC200 was available as an all solid state and hybrid model. This is a hybrid. Now, according to the, the instruction or the service manual, it says units up to about 61,200 were hybrid and beyond that they were solid state. However, this one, the serial number is 99921. So the service manual is actually incorrect in this case. This is a Sony TC200 that was uh, brought in for me to look at. So before we even load up a tape, I want to see what is working and what is not. Looks like rewind is working. Ah, the pinch roller is not moving. Fast forward works. Looks like the pinch roller is not moving properly. Moving up a bit now, but it's still not engaging all the way. Or is that the instant stop that's not working? So it looks like the mechanism could be gummed up. The capstan is not turning. Now it is. Oh, that's noisy. Okay, so we gotta take this thing apart, lubricate it for one, and we make it lucky, and that's all that it needs is to be lubricated. Now, I've never opened up one of these ones before, but being a Sony, it's probably gonna be the same as all of them. My phone's talking to me. Every time I turn around, I get this warning that there's an excessive heat warning has been issued for my location yes i know there's an excessive heat warning it's like 30 degrees out today i'm looking at the thermometer on my uh, on my clock here on the wall and it says 29 in the shop here it's pretty warm okay so i gotta take out uh, these screws to lift the face off it and i gotta take that looks like somebody stripped that one Gotta take out that one. Take the pinch roller off. These are these are what's called mu metal, MU. It's not magnetic. See, my screwdriver is is magnetic, but these type of screws don't work. Okay, so I gotta take this thing apart. I'm just gonna Clear some space to put all the pieces here so I don't lose them. So let's have to remove the knobs. There's a screw that holds this on here. I actually don't need to remove this lever or this fast forward control because as you'll see, once I remove the screws that hold the face on, it is going to lift off with this because it's, it, the spring is anchored to the cabinet itself. And that knob. And now this should lift off. Oh, one more. One more screw back here. And the instant stop. The knob also, I think, has to come off. Maybe not. Yep, it does. This just pulls off.
And there, as you see, this knob just lifts right off with that. It just stays there. There's the uh, unit itself. So now I can work on this. These are pretty straightforward units and they don't have a lot of problems, although they do need to be lubricated from time to time. See that? Oh, that's noisy. I am going to have to take off the controls here too, it looks like. I'm going to have to pull this base off because I'm going to have to pull this head block out in order to uh, access the entire flywheel to lubricate it. There we go. And that racket that's going in the background, just that little fan that I've got going in here now because, see, it's it's now going up to 30 in here. It's um, mid-afternoon here, July 27th, and uh, we are going through a bit of a heat wave here. Actually, we have been all week. It's supposed to get even hotter this weekend. Wonderful. i got to go back to work on Sunday. So not looking forward to the, the heat, but especially for not the type of work I have to do. I'm working outside. Okay, so now I've lifted this off. I should be able to lift off. I should be able to lift this off the, the uh, oh, I can take the flywheel off here. This has got an adapter on it for one and seven eighths. should just lift off that collar it's probably frozen on there there we go that's the three and three quarter um, and um, seven and a half adapter Anytime you work on any of these mechanisms, it's a really good idea to do what I'm doing and uh, videotape what you are doing because um, it's really easy to misplace something like a spring or a gear or a wheel. It makes it easy when you're putting things back together if you know where they come from, right? Like in this case, I'm going to release this catch or this spring that goes around this idler just so that I can remove the tension and it goes back down to the control arm. Now I can release that. That'll allow these two springs to release. Get that out of the way. Got one more spring I'm going to release here. Okay. See now I've, I've recorded all this so I know where all these springs go when it comes time to put this thing back together be able to just lift this out of here if I'm careful. There we go. Now I can pull the, the flywheel out and clean this up and lubricate it.
I just got the TV going here in the background, kind of watching it, kind of half-assed while I do this. Fail Army is on. <laughs> they actually got a TV show now called Fail Army. And uh, all the stupid things that people are doing is... Uh, you wonder how many of these people that, you know, do these stunts, some of them I'm sure are intentional, other ones are just totally by accident. Some of these people look like they're getting hurt pretty bad. <laughs> Probably shouldn't laugh about it, but when you see some guy, um, when you see some guy flying his parachute and he flies right into a tree and then his buddy that's following him on another, like, not a, it's not a tandem jump, but two guys jumping off out of a plane and they're you know, the parachute, one guy's got a helmet cam on, he's following his buddy, and his buddy flies right into a tree, and then his pal flies right into him. I mean, you, you can't help but think, what were they thinking? <laughs> but, uh, okay, let's uh, get some oil going on here and see if we can make this bearing quiet. Take off this clip. I want to take this entire piece apart. See this stuff, this this, uh, this lubricant that's in here, it, 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 it almost turns to glue when it dries out. It was a grease originally, but it's, as you can see, it really gets gummed up. It's terrible stuff. But once we fix it, then uh, this thing should be you know, good for... Oh wow. This uh, unit was actually was owned by a, a, a good client of mine that brings me a lot of stuff. And he's been wanting to get into reel to reel for a while. But this is a much better choice, being a Sony. These ones here are actually quite reliable. I've got a couple Sonys myself. I've got uh, two Sony and three Akai and a Tiak 10 and a half inch four track in my collection of reel to reel machines. Why anybody needs that many reel to reel machines, I'll never know, but hey, I've got them. Okay, that's clean. We'll do the same here for the mounting shaft.
See, that's how it's supposed to work. No resistance whatsoever. Okay, let's get the uh, washers back together here and put this thing back sort of together. That's how that works. We can get this uh, mechanism back together now. Get the flywheel back in. So this is just to make sure that everything is operating as it should. Okay, that's better. That works there. Okay. Now that goes back around there, but we're gonna we're gonna lubricate these wheels anyway first. Just want to make sure that everything is working as it's supposed to. Now we can put the the head pressure pad release lever back in place. Okay, that part looks normal. Let's um, okay. Let's um, lubricate. Well, I've got this thing apart. Let's lubricate these other bearings. Mm -hmm.
Yes, believe it or not, that's good enough. That's got oil down into that bearing and you don't want too much in there. Because you don't want it spinning out and getting onto the rubber once it's uh, running. Or you'll be causing exactly what you're trying to prevent, that slippage. Speaking of slippage, it's going to uh, clean the outside surface of the flywheel here because there could be some oil and stuff that got on from my hands when I was handling it. So we'll spin this and just make sure that there's nothing on here. Okay, time to put the springs back on that pull the pieces together, hold the uh, pull the rollers and stuff in place. It's three springs, four springs. One goes on there, and there's two of them that go up to here. Just put a drop of oil down onto the uh, pinch roller shaft there. And put on the Capstan sleeve adapter. Let's see if we have power. Okay, re rewind. Uh, that belt looks kind of useless. Actually, it's not, but it's just it's been sitting so long in one direction that you can see it's kind of kind of taken on the shape of the pulleys because it's been sitting there forever. So that's one direction and here's the other direction. And looks like this, oh, you know what it is? So of course that's why we videotape, right? The correct position for that lever is on this side, right on here, but it actually fits down into a little slot right behind here. So that when the lever is turned, it pulls the idler into place, but it also doesn't get in the way of the cam lever to actuate the pinch roller. That's how it works. And then our other speed is, I think it's that one. There's our other speed. Seven and a half and three and three quarters. This thing is starting to look like it's ready to uh, test, so let's plug the speakers into it and we'll uh, put a tape on it and see whether we get any sound out of this unit. Volume left, well, that control needs to be clean. Volume right, tone, output is in speaker mode. Yeah, that should do it. Mm -hmm. That sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. 
don't know what speed it's at either. Nothing is slipping on this. Okay, let's uh, see how this thing sounds. It should have a tone on this tape. Notice the strobe on the pinch uh, roller is not stable. Let's uh, try playing some music. Hey, I believe this is seven and a half inch. Should be some music bakery stuff. <coughs> I think it's seven and a half on these tracks. Yeah. Nope. Definitely sounds slow. Well, I've just verified that um, this is going slow, which I, you know would be odd for a machine that is driven by a AC motor. Motor's running a bit slow, it looks like, because this music is playing a little bit slow. Now I know that the tape is correct because I just I just took this tape and I played it on both my Akai 4000 and my uh, Akai 265G, uh, GX265D, as well as my uh, TIAC, which has got 7.5 and 15 IPS, and it plays the right speed. But it's a little bit slow on this one. Which is odd because uh, being a synchronous, well, it's not a synchronous motor, it's an AC motor, but it should be going the right speed, right? This is controlled by the line frequency, and it's going a bit on the slow side, so we'll have to investigate as to why it's going slow. The issue that I've found with this unit is when it goes into fast forward, this idler is supposed to lift up like that to engage the fast forward speed, which is done by pulling this lever like that, which which moves this lever and then that is supposed to kick up but it doesn't so I gotta figure out why it's not lifting because this 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 should lift this arm up to the fast forward position for the fast forward mode on this because that's what it's supposed to do it's supposed to kick it over like that you see So this is how it operates. When this is lifted up like this, it goes into fast forward. So what's happening is when the, the lever flips over, it's not raising this up high enough. So I just have to maybe adjust this. Uh, oh, that's what that's for. That's to stop that from dropping back too far. Okay, that makes more sense. That's a stopping arm that prevents the lever from dropping back too far. That way this thing can have more of a curve to it. Okay, here's how the unit is supposed to operate now. I've kind of straightened this arm up a bit. It's a bit bent there. Goes into play. And if I put it in fast forward, it now rides up and goes into full fast forward. It just changes the angle of the rubber tire enough that the rubber tire now rides all the way up to the top and engages the non-clutched portion of the hub, as I'll show you. As you can see, the lower portion of this is a, a slip clutch, so in play, the idler stays down and it's driving the 
slip portion or the clutch which limits the torque. And when you put it into fast forward, it shifts the angle which causes it to jump up and drive the non-slip portion. And of course, I can still stop it here. It's a lot more torque. As you can see, I can stop the slip portion and the reel keeps turning. So this is the fast forward speed. Okay, I believe I got this thing working fairly good now. Play, you got your play torque, and then fast forward, the idler comes up, goes into high torque mode. And then back to play, when it goes down to play, this, little, this will drive the idler tower back down. We still have this issue as to why this thing is running a little bit on the slow side though. It's like the motor is running a little slow. As you can see, it's definitely not my lubricant on my flywheel because the flywheel continues to spin even when there's no drive. So there's nothing dragging down the flywheel. There's nothing dragging down the pinch roller. Um, the tape is playing slow. It's got to be the motor itself is running a little bit slow. But why? Could be a capacitor on this motor. This this would be a capacitor drive motor. It might be, might be the cap is. Got a lot of torque, so hmm. sometimes the little capacitors like they have like a, a two or three microfarad AC capacitor, and when they uh, get weak, it can cause the motor speed to fluctuate. So it might be that. So we'll have to investigate the capacitor on here. But it is definitely playing a bit slow. So to take the chassis out. Going to remove a couple of screws in the bottom and in the top here, and then the chassis should lift out, and we should be able to find the AC capacitor for the main motor. Easiest way, of course, to remove this is just to turn the unit over onto its face, and then the cover lifts off. And here, uh, oh, cool! <laughs> Look at this. This has got tubes in it. So I wonder why this thing was warm. It's got a tube amplifier. Wow! I've never seen a Sony with a tube amplifier. What a score that was. So it's a it's a hybrid, right? It's got it's got transistors in it as well. But what a score! I did not expect that to see a a, a Sony tape recorder with tubes in it. Wow! That is neat. So this is our oil filled cap for the motor. This is the run cap for the motor. It's a 1.5 microfarad, uh, 250 volt, I think it is. Uh, let me see if I can find, it's an AC capacitor, so I doubt whether I'm gonna have one of this size, but I, I, I think this is probably why this thing's not running up to speed. We can uh, disconnect it and measure it and see what the capacity is. But I bet it's going to be coming up a bit low, so let's just get the meter out and measure this thing. So this is a 1.5 microfarad uh, oil-filled cap, and you put the meter on it, and it's measuring like 12. It's measuring really high, at yeah, 10 point. Well, it's going down a bit. Let's see what it'll, what it'll settle in at. Usually a slow running AC motor is caused by a capacitor that's gone out of out of spec. In this case it's really high. So that could be causing this thing to run a bit slow. I think I'd like to change it. And uh, these units are kind of cool. I'd say this this is kind of a rarity because Sony prided themselves on being all solid state and Sony didn't have a lot of stuff that had tubes in it. This is one of the fewer pieces that you know that they that they put out that, that did have tubes. I have an Akai um, reel to reel which has got tubes in it that I'll I'll never sell, and it's it's got its own unique sound. It sounds fantastic, but uh, these are a rarity, and uh, there, there's a, not a lot of these ones. I don't think kicking around still because Sony didn't have 
much in the way of tube amplifiers. You know, they they Sony always prided themselves on solid state. They were solid state where everybody else was still using a lot of tubes. So um, yeah, this is going to be an interesting one. But we'll get the right capacitor for this thing and uh, see if that fixes the problem with the speed. So I've got a new 1.5 microfarad, 5%. 450 volt AC 50 60 Hertz this is a motor run capacitor same value that this one is supposed to be of course it's a different shape we can just strap this to the to the existing one I don't need to remove the existing in fact I only need to disconnect the one lug from there we'll solder the new one in place put some heat shrink around the second connector and then uh, check this thing out and see whether it's uh, fixed my speed problem. So I'm out the new capacitor just using the existing screw that held the original one in place. Okay, the controls are just down inside here. So it's got to get in here with some cleaner. Rotate the control a few times. Next control, which is over here. Rotate that control a few times. And the same for the tone control, which is a little harder to get at, but it's it's a double control and it's back in here. Thank God that chainsaw has stopped. That is annoying. Now I know how my neighbors would have felt with me uh, when I was about 12. I used to, uh, I used to ride, I had a dirt bike, and I used to ride it around in my parents' yard. They had a fairly good sized yard. So I could, I could ride the thing. Um, I could ride it to the front of the house and then to the back of the property, it was a, a pretty good a pretty good sized lot. It was like on a double sized lot. So I had a little track that I had, uh, I had basically burned into the grass where I would make my turn and go around and go to the backyard and do another turn and come to the back. And in the summer, I'd ride this thing for hours and hours. And then the police would show up because the neighbors would get tired of the constant back and forth and it was bad enough with me doing it but two or three of my friends would come over with their bikes and mine was quiet I had a proper muffler on mine but uh, my buddies when they came over well they didn't have a quiet muffler on theirs and you could hear it through the whole neighborhood we couldn't figure out why the neighbors were upset with us well after listening to this chainsaw for the past three days going on all day I could certainly understand what they were getting a little bit annoyed about because I'm ready to go over there and cut that tree down with the guy still up there. Man, that thing's annoying. It's, it's quiet now. For the next five minutes, it'll be quiet, and then it'll be going for about 15 minutes again. And then and then they start up the, chi, the tree chipper, and that'll run for half an hour. The units 
back together. We shall thread this up and I'm going to let this thing play for a while and uh, make sure all the lubricant and everything is all broken in. And then uh, it'll be time to put it together and uh, well, we'll do a test recording on it I guess too, but uh, for now I'm just going to do a playback on this before I put the top face on it and then uh, we'll put the front cover on it and uh, get it all ready to go home. Once again keep an eye on that uh, strobe disc on the pinch roller and see how much uh, closer it is to the exact speed this time. See how quiet these controls are now. Aha. Here's the pulley going into fast forward, you'll see. There it goes, right? And then go back to play, and it drops back down. And that's what sets the, the uh, torque, right? This is the low torque mode, and then in fast forward, it's the, uh, the high torque mode, you can see. That's how that operates. That's how this Sony operates. Some of them are a little different, but that's how some of them, like the ones I have, actually have two separate idlers. It has one for play and then it has a different one for um, fast forward. This is a single um, idler. Uh, quite ingenious. All they do is they tilt the angle slightly so that it, it, the, it's either forced up or forced down just by the, the action of, of um, driving it into the motor shaft. The, the, the changing the angle slightly will either force it up or force it down. It's quite ingenious how Sony did this on this unit. Uh, let's just go to the slower speed. I think it's like that. And then this should drop down to half the speed, which it just did. And see, that changes the position of this idler. We go back to the higher speed. We just drop it down. Now we're back up to our 7.5 IPS. And I'm I believe if you take this off, it's not documented there, but at least on my on my Akai, if you take off the adapter, you get the slower speed. Now my Akai 4000 only has one motor speed, so you take off the sleeve for um, three and three quarters. You put it on for seven and a half. Uh, my older Akai has a two-speed motor, and with the sleeve on, it's three and three quarters, seven and a half, and with the sleeve off, it's one and seven eighths, three and three quarters. This probably is the same. Where if you put it in the three and three quarter mode and take the sleeve off, it'll be one and seven eighths. But I haven't tried it. I'm not going to try it because not necessary. This unit is advertised as the two-speed deck, but I, th I think I, I think that's what will happen if you take that off on this one. It's, it's the size that's required for one and seven eighths. Anyway, um, this is working. I'm going to let this thing play for a while. We'll put it together. We'll do some test recording on it. Clean the heads, of course, and do all the other stuff. But I'm going to let it test run here for a while because this thing probably hasn't been run in, in several years. And uh, make sure everything's still good on it. And then uh, we will uh, put it together. Before I can put the top cover on, I have to remove the pinch roller once again. Okay, we'll put the top cover on. I have to line up the meters and so forth. That lines up with the, the fast forward lever. Now I'll put the screws in to hold the unit together.
Okay, now it's back together. Let's thread up a tape using the proper tape guides, which will make it easier to thread. Give it another test, and then we'll do a recording test on this thing. So the, the tape guide here is supposed to obviously make it easier to thread. Just drop the tape in like that. I'm just a little bit high on the control here because it's kind of turning the fast forward one at the same time. We'll just back this up just a bit. Give it a little bit of clearance. Fast forward, you turn it like that. Neat, huh? That's how it works. Well, it's all back together. Let's uh, do a test recording. Are you guys wanting to see the speed? 4 kilohertz test tone on this tape. As you can see, it's coming up at 3.93 kilohertz, 3.94. So I'm going to say this is close enough. Since the speed on this is regulated by the, the speed of the motor, there's no real, there's no way to adjust it. But uh, we're, we're in the ballpark. We're pretty darn close to being perfect. So we're, we're pretty, we're, we're done damn close. Even on the one kilohertz. So to set this up for recording, you hold down your record buttons, set your levels. And then it's just a matter of moving down the record and switching it on to uh, the play. So I'm going to cue a track up here and we'll make a recording on this portion of the tape. So I select record, start my recording up, start my music. Now the idea on these is that the volume coming out of the speakers is going to be controlled by the volume here. So you, you can't turn the speakers off. Unless I switch it to line, that'll kill the speakers. Um, the output on this is fed to both the speakers and to the uh, recording circuits at the same time. And uh, so, and if it's in line output, it's giving a line output. It uses the same jacks, the same plugs. They're just little quarter or uh, 3.5 millimeter mono plugs. You can either plug speakers in, or you can plug your auxiliary cord into there to take it to your amplifier. Um, you give them two choices, line output or speaker output. But when you're recording, it is going to pass the signal through either as a line output or a speaker output to the outputs. And it'll be dependent on your recording level here. So I'm going to let this record, we'll rewind it, see how it sounds. Okay, recording is done. We'll stop it, we're going to rewind the tape. And I'll shut off this fan when I play it back. Although, these are small speakers on this thing, right? So. We're not going to get fantastic sound out of this, and I don't have uh, 3.5 millimeter two RCA plugs to adapt this, so I can't put it through my amplifier. I have to listen to it through the built-in speakers. So I did zero the counter when I started. So, so there we go. Playback.
guys didn't see me do it, I didn't show you on camera, but I did demagnetize the head with my home-built head demagnetizer. Um, I didn't shoot that. I also didn't show you cleaning the heads on this because I think you guys know how to clean heads. So I didn't show that, but the heads were cleaned, the heads were demagnetized. I did not need to adjust the azimuth on the heads. The, the high frequencies are sounding good on it and the factory paint is still sealed. So nobody's played with the heads. So there's probably no reason to adjust them because you'd hear it on the high frequencies and the high frequencies sound good off this unit. done ready to go back home I'm gonna rewind the tape take it off send it on its way I have another reel to reel from the same uh, client and even older one than this that'll be coming up real soon if you enjoy this channel please consider becoming a member either through PayPal donations directly or through patreon it's through contributions from my viewers that allow me to continue to operate the channel uh, I do have costs associated with producing this content uh, and the only revenue I get for the channel is either through the advertising or through direct uh, donations. And at last count, the percentage of people using ad blockers now is exceeding 60%. So 60% of my channel revenue is being lost due to people using ad blockers. So I certainly appreciate every dollar that is contributed on Patreon or every donation by PayPal. It uh, is really appreciated and it allows me to continue to produce high quality content. Without your support, I wouldn't be able to continue. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.